So it's November, David. Is it? Yeah. It's October last time you said. Well, it's November because we've done this take three now. Oh, that's great. Take three. <laughs> yeah, I thought take that was four members. You've just come back from a really crappy train service. Well, it was a really nice Christmas lights switch on, but yeah, really crappy train service because the fact that it's hardly ready. Mm. Who did the Who did the switch on? Uh, the cast of the producers and a DJ who I've never heard of in my life. Right. Okay. Wonderful stuff. Okay, David Murphy. Yes, hello. That is my name. Although I thought you were calling me Smurf for this podcast. Yes. And you were calling yourself Hulk. Who's the mystery voice for this podcast? I don't think we actually decided, did we? No. You wanted it to be Kanye. Oh, sorry, yay. Yee. Yee. Yee, yay, yee, yay, yo. Tang, tang, walla, walla, bing, bang. Wu Tang? No, I don't think uh, yee was ever in Wu Tang. (laughs) We should point out we've both been recovering from uh, our various degrees of mannish fluidity. That we got from Comic Con. We attended a Comic Con mm. last weekend. Yes, we did, together. Oh, God, they're having a snog. <laughs> Sorry, I should point out I'm doing what I did like last podcast. And I'm uh, saying what I'm seeing on the TV. Right, so pulling the lever. Everybody is being served a nasty lunch food. Leicester City Football Club. Right, okay. Yes, it's been it's been a uh, sad start to the month for uh, the Foxes, who've lost their chairman after a, a horrific helicopter crash after a game at the end of the month. The interesting thing, obviously, you can't really judge it because you're not here, but I can, obviously. Is I went down there. I went down to the um, memorial site. I suppose it would be now tribute site where the book of condolences is. Yeah. And uh, you could hear a pin drop. Oh, of course. Why would why would you talk in the moment of silence like that? Why would why would it be a uh, jubilant occasion? You know, that's that's the the human reaction to that sort of thing. You, you wouldn't have anything to say. Mm. And of course, the people in 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 the actual plane were him, the chairman, two of his employees, a pilot who'd had twenty years service, and his girlfriend, who was also a pilot, wasn't she? I believe so. She, yeah, she was working. Mm. And it's just a sad, sad week for Leicester, really. There's not really much to go on with that. Well, there is one story. Uh, Leicester, the following week, they played they just played against Cardiff. Uh, and the first goal was scored... At the, I don't know if I'll get his name right. I'm just going to say the surname, which is Gray. I can't remember his first name that well. Once he'd scored, he uh, took his top off to reveal a shirt saying that, that was for Vijay. But because he did that, the ref booked him, and that sent, obviously, the fans into a roar of boos. But that's one of the rules of the game. You're not allowed to take your shirt off. Mm. What mm. Was, seemed as if it was a good move, you know, a tribute, and it'll be, you know, reported in the media as such. As the game goes, there's no, there's no time to do that. Whether the ref then speaks out and says, you know, I think it was a good move, I just I had to I could go by the rules of the FA. You know, the ref didn't book him, then the ref would be in trouble, obviously. Mm. OK, pull in the lever again. You put on shoes every day. You walking down the street with no shoes, somebody might think it's something wrong with you. Banksy. Oh, yes. Look, that, that, was, that was a while back now. That seems like an ancient memory. That's what art is. It is ancient memory preserved for all time. Mm. So, to give context to this story, basically, it was being sold at Sotheby's, was it not? In London. Mm. Yeah, London Art Gallery. Yeah, and it was it was sold for a million pounds, and then when the uh, auction had ended, it then got shredded with a with a shredder which was inbuilt into the frame. And people tried to stop it and take it off, but I think it got halfway there. And now it's increased in price, I think it is, or something like that. Isn't yeah, it? it's increased. Yeah, the, uh, the, the the lady who bought it decided to keep it because the, the value of price went up for it. Well, first of all, we should say that there was a video released documenting how the trap was made using another copy of the painting with the frame mechanism. But whoever it filmed, whether it was Banksy themselves or whoever it was, noted that the, the trap didn't work properly because it only shredded it halfway in mm. malfunction. The funny story came out of it. Somebody who also had a copy. What was, it, was it the girl with the balloon? That was the painting in question. Yeah. Somebody all who also had a copy of that, not framed, of course. It was with like probably a printed version. 
for because the value has gone up on that version of National News. Perhaps it will be the same for all the copies. Decided to shred it halfway the picture, and it's like I think it ended up with a value of a pound. <laughs> Art is a crazy world I never want to get into. Do you think Banksy voted Brexit? Why are you obsessed every week with whether a certain someone has voted Brexit? <laughs> Question me on this last episode. <laughs> Do you even know if Banksy is British? There you go. We don't know. I mean, you talk about whether they've put on the voting form, I am Banksy and I am voting for. (laughs) Okay, let me pull the lever again. You have to bring the flowers to the door first. Ladybirds. Okay, so ladybirds, this this whole thing that came halfway through October was basically that ladybirds have... STDs, but they're not STDs that are transferable to humans, but STDs that are transferable to other ladybirds. Okay then. It was basically it's basically killing most of the population of ladybirds in the um, UK. Well, I mean, you can't help sort of help it in those sort of situations. It's all these natural conditions. You can only contain, protect, quarantine where you need to. Compared to other situations where, like for example, recently. Uh, China has announced that they're ending the 25-year ban on medicines using rhino horns and tiger bones, and that's something that's you know that's human intervention. That's something that you could just say, well, don't don't do that. You know, you banned it for a reason. These these animals were in danger of going extinct. Put it in the again. I just told you. I don't care. Why are you mad? Put it in the lever again. Yeah. Is that your best uh, Prince Charles impression? Talking about the royal family, it is. Eugene's wedding and hopeless sleepers. You hear that, Matt? What? Sound of silence. Yeah. Uh, basically, Princess Eugene had her wedding, and in the process of the wedding, they asked a load of homeless people to move. It's kind of like karma that, that they didn't get the uh, the TV deal from the BBC that she wanted. How'd you work that out? It wasn't as big as anybody probably would have hoped, but you know, if you're going to treat people like crap, then don't expect everybody to fall down at your feet. There was another story with, uh, was it Prince Andrew or Prince Charles, uh, managed to offend one of the magicians that were performing, asking how, how much do you get paid? It was a very different atmosphere from the, we could say, from the Harry and Meghan wedding. I don't watch any of them. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a royal wedding fan. I'm indifferent on the royals themselves when it comes to weddings or baby announcements or any of this sort of stuff. I'm just, I'm, I'm a, I like the Queen. I'm quite, I'm, I'm all right with Harry, but I'm not, I'm not, I'm not for the pomp and circumstance bit. I mean, you've got to thank them for the fact that you have a military service and getting involved in that sort of thing, and charities, and obviously with Harry doing the Invictus Games, that's that's on this month. In terms of you know, the people that they are, who they are, it's just the, live their lives, normal lives, their, their lives don't affect mine, that's that's okay. I don't mind the Royals. There you go. You don't like them? No, I don't mind them. <laughs> you don't mind them? No. No. We probably the same, the same then, you're indifferent. Good. Pulling the lever again. Well, it's not a matter of it's a matter of you just oh in the club. I mean um as as and you know you know so uh Doctor Who. If you uh if you have a ladies' night, it depends if there's a lady doctor. Well, it's technically not male or female either way, is it? So you're having a uh, an alien night. Alien night, yeah. What do you think, Dave? Well, I've already said that I'm I'm fine with it. I think all the furore over the choice of Cash for the Doctor was a bit OTT because she's rather all right. The issues that I've had with the series so far is A, the writing style, and B, I think there's too many assistants. At least with the second one, you can easily whittle them down and the series will just jump from there. But, you know, as much as I like the other girl who was from Hollyoaks before she went to it, who was, who was playing the police officer, who I can't remember the name of, it's like one character extra. So my only guess is that she might get killed off halfway through the series or turn into a, some sort of robot or alien, as most of these assistants do. Mm. I think I think the other funny thing, I suppose, about the whole thing is that the Americans can't understand the Yorkshire accent. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We've finally got our Doctor. Uh, or who are Doctor. TARDIS looks pretty good. Well, of course it would. It's got a custard cream machine. Yes. <laughs> That's me, it's old. Oh, dear. I'll have one of those, thank you. And the, and the biscuit. You haven't mentioned the fact that this series has been very, uh, shall we say, less gimmicky with its aliens and more political, or historical. We're raving over that Rosa Parks episode. Apparently, apparently the top five or top three episode of all time. Ooh, that brings me to my next poll. 
<laughs> That's not the sort of thing you want to say about Rosa Parks. <laughs> Jesus, get back to the back of the bus, man. Bloody hell, you dirty boy. I'm a pimp. Ryanair. I didn't know Ryan had air. Mm. You should uh, go see the doctor. It might be gas. Yeah. Ryanair. Now, obviously, we've got to be careful here what we say. I just, I just looked at that and thought, you absolute lunatic. <laughs> say that, but it happens all the time. I could go on with my rant of the month, of rant of the episode with this, because it, it leads on to another thing I wanted to talk about, but I'll, I'll keep it succinct, because as you say, we should be careful. But do go on with the original story about what happened on the flight. Well, basically, he wanted her to move, she wouldn't, and then he abused her verbally. Yes, called her, called her ugly... I'm pretty sure there was a bit more to that. I don't think he used the N-word or anything like that. He was just being derogatory, you know, called her yeah. ugly bitch. This plane isn't moving until she's moved. The funny thing is, I like karma. I really do like karma when it's in the social media aspect because as a result of them obviously knowing about the story, they found the man. The man got singled out and he lost... You know his family and all that stuff. His family didn't want to know well, him. They, apparently, they said they said it was estranged from him anyway because he was always a bit kooky or whatever. Mm. You forgot the immediate reaction of what Ryanair actually did. This happens all the time, ashamedly. So there's always people coming out, you know, on trains and buses, on planes, in shops, going up to people of, of, of a different colour or a different religion or whatever. But Ryanair made it the situation ten times worse by instead of telling him off or moving him or anything like that, they actually ended up letting her move. Or should we say letting her, but well Which didn't really help matters, did it? Well no, of course it didn't. <laughs> if it wasn't for it being picked up in the media and other passengers saying, Well hang on, this is an issue then it would have just passed by, you know. You know, it's like like last year with that doctor on the United Airlines flight. It's just it's the same situation, but this time last year where he got knocked out on the head and dragged off a plane because there was too many people on the plane. Mm. Two things I did pick up from it. One was the fact that it happened on the same day the Rosa Parks episode of Doctor Who aired, so obviously there were comparisons being made. Yeah. Yeah, that that was the first thing. Second thing is, didn't Ryanair only do something after the flight had happened? What do you mean? Well, didn't they ask her to move whilst the thing was in flight? Which meant they couldn't obviously boot him out of the, out of the plane because the plane was obviously, you know, airborne. It's the mm. fact that there was no sort of telling off. There was no seeing us like neutral even. It was it was seemed to be taking a side by moving. The problematic. I'm using quote marks. Mm. Well, I'm going to let you play with my lever now, Dave. Well, no, no. I'll probably do the lever thing. It brings on. It connects to a certain point that more and more. Especially around this time of year, because we just had Halloween. Ah! Wonderful. Hello. Ah! <laughs> Oi, piss off, Grandma! <laughs> Sorry. Uh, anyway, uh, what's talking about? Uh, yeah, Halloween. Uh, yeah, there was more people uh, dressing up in black characters, or the, the rise of supposed blackface and that sort of thing. And it's been a big debate uh, across social media, news, and all, all sorts. There was a guy on a train who was dressed as Samuel Jackson who got caught out for it. You haven't pulled the lever yet. I don't want to talk about the lever. I'm saying there was a connecting point. There was going to oh. be my rant, but it's not. Do you start to see it as a tribute to his film? Or can you not at all? No. Can you dress as a character, the black character, but without using blackface or any kind of tan? Here's a question for you, because I know, I know you, David Murphy, right? There was one year, I can't remember what year it was, but one year where you went as a Smurf and you actually painted your face blue. If you'd done it black, I think a lot of people would have found that racist. Yeah, it, it, it's just the colour. And when I was the zombie clown, I was wearing a uh, red afro. And one of the, gen- the Jenners, I don't know which one, was in a Vogue photo shoot and uh, she was wearing a perm which apparently got accused of culturally appropriating an afro. I thought, how did that happen? That's where I wonder where the line is. Is it just uh, your colour and face? Can you not portray any sort of characters at all, hairstyles or whatever, if you, you don't mean ill intent by it? I think people find it racist because didn't they used to do it in like the fifties with film? That's what we do with the blackface yeah. and the era of all these gollywogs and stuff like that, where it used to have the big lips, and it was you know it was done to take the mic. Right. Perhaps, perhaps it's not a case of all the time people being 
intolerant in that way, but perhaps they're just not educated enough and don't know the historical significance of it. Ignorant, eh? Well, possibly, yeah. There was also the story of the girl who dressed as Mo Salah, the little girl, who had the moustache and the afro and everything, and the mum got into a lot of trouble for dressing her that way, because the girl really likes Mo Salah. Should it be a matter that it should be asked to the person that you're dressing up as whether they're okay with that? Mm. Well, saying that then, Dave, maybe you can explain this news story, which I did find slightly disturbing, about the the parents who dressed their five-year-old up as Hitler. Well, yeah, that, that that's, that's always going to cause problems. <laughs> Not for the same reasons we've been talking about before, but people have always been dressing as Hitler or evil characters from history, whether it's fiction or real, but... It's how they're portraying the use. If there's people like worshiping or portraying them as some sort of celebratory figures, then no, that's obviously wrong. You know, I've seen some people dress up as Hitler and then get sponged in the face and that sort of thing. We should be allowed to take the mic. If 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 you see Carl dress Hitler as before, do we go back in time and say, Well, Charlie Chaplin, you can't have that anymore? Yes, but Charlie Chaplin wasn't a genocidal maniac. Yes, and neither is the boy dressing as Hitler. Nobody who dresses Hitler is a genocidal maniac. That's that's the whole point of where do we draw the line with this sort of stuff? Because whether it's thought, whether it's the way you dress or look or certain things you say, you're always in risk of being compared to somebody who's a fascist or not or whatever, something, something insensitive, in that you're almost like somebody who's gone out and killed people. And it's like... Mm. Perhaps they're doing it for parody. Mm. Do another news story, Dave. You've got one left. You want me to pull the lever this time? Yeah. I'm going to pull it in the gaming direction, if that's okay with you. Whatever. And I'm going to talk about... Boopy doo scoop That horrific Diablo announcement and reaction that happened this week. Go on, then. Basically, BlizzCon, which is a yearly event, uh, hosted by... was originally just by Blizzard, but then obviously Blizzard Activision teamed up. So you get Blizzard games, Activision games, things like Warcraft, uh, Overwatch, Starcraft is still about in it somewhere like that, and of course Diablo. And it's been six years since the last Diablo game, Diablo 3, and people are wondering is there going to be a new Diablo 4, now there's going to be a remaster or something like that. And uh, the guy on stage, this, this video is all about this, went and announced a new special spin-off game called Diablo Immortal, and it was all trained, it was all nice and for that. And then they said, this is for mobile phones only. And the crowd went silent. It did not go down well at all. But of course, big debate started of it now, where there's some reactions. Somebody asked, uh, is it going to be ported to PC? Because a lot of people who came to that con, they're all kind of PC gamers, as you should probably understand. And they're wondering, uh, is, is it going to get the ports or is it just staying mobile? And the developers confirmed, yes, it's just going to be mobile. They ain't got any plans. So there was booze in the audience then. Uh, another person sort of asked, uh, is this an off-season April Fool's joke? Which went down uh, well as well. And the, yeah, the, one of the developers says, do you not have phones? And the, and the crowd thought, what? So yeah, that, that's not gone down well. It went down even worse online. The trailer is one of the most downvoted videos of the, of the month since Call of Duty. And there's a debate online now whether gamers have become too entitled or whether there's a problem with toxic masculinity within gaming just because you don't like a gaming announcement. Do you feel game, gamers are too entitled or toxic, Matt? Yes. Oh, well, that's that simple then. <laughs> Why do you think that? Well, how do you mean toxic? I don't mean in a competitive sense, because we all know how bad it can be playing online. Because we know there's been a few things like loot boxes and gambling well, recently and everything's monetized. Well, this actually does come quite nicely into the other headline you could actually talk about. Because we completely forgot about UFC. How is that your opinion about bloody gamers? Well, no, because... Let's talk about gamers. Well, no. Yeah, Conor McGregor is one of those. Well, well no, he is in the game. You well, no, see, you're yeah. going about business practices and, 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 you know, toxicity within gaming. But gaming has become a sport now, hasn't it? Much like UFC well, and sports, yeah. boxing and stuff like that. And that whole thing at the start of the month was just nuts. Because the, their, their teams were battling each other. Even though the whole fight was against two people, the, the other teams were battling yeah, each other. That's been the whole thing about competitiveness, isn't it? It's, yeah. it's, it's, it's not just sport gaming, it's everything. You've had people competing since bloody Romans. You know, you all talk about these legends of the Greek gods all fighting in arenas and stuff like that. Bare buttock naked. I don't know why, I would have just worn a bloody pair of thermal pants. But 
there's always been this culture of competitiveness and fighting. Has that always been the case, that it's been masculine and toxic? Whichever realm you're in, there's always going to be a degree of competition, whether it's competing for jobs, whether it's competing for, I don't know, the partner, what, what are you doing for? And cheating. And yeah, there'll be people cheating in these competitions, mm. of course there will. Yes, Conor McGregor and Khabib Nurmagomedov from that UFC fight, which ended in a complete farce, and both fighters have since been suspended for the, uh, the fighting that took place after the fight, post-fight fighting. Well, it's just unprofessional, really, at the end of the day, isn't it? Well, yeah. The one thing that's always been that seems to be the case with Conor McGregor in the last couple of years is that a lot of it, everything, gets exaggerated and overblown because he is, you know, a character, a personality. You know, he likes to bring the cameras and he likes to play it up. Khabib's always been, supposedly had this background where he's fighting bears from a young age and that sort of stuff. Is it, is it a case where the UFC needs to have a more dramatic or character-filled sport and people are accused of it being boring in the past for some reason? Do you think it was was um, orchestrated a bit like WWE? Well, that's, what, that's the whole point I'm making, mm. the fact that you know, they try perhaps trying to get some of those uh, viewers away from wrestling. Here's some storylines for you. Because we had that stuff a few months ago when the, the, the fight before the fight was announced about kind of throwing that trolley through that bus window. And speaking of the WWE, actually, you know, anything that could have happened in the UFC probably wasn't as controversial as what WWE was doing at the start of November. And that was uh, their hosting of an event in Saudi Arabia, which, of course, we know, as we know, as we've been talking about uh, the story of the journalist who was missing. And not going too much into that. No. Uh, we don't know, we still don't know all the facts, and we don't want, we, it's not sort of story we talk about here. However, isn't uh, there a rumour that, that one of the Saudi princes is buying WWE? Yes, there was, that was the thing I was about to go mm. to. Uh, well, the event happened and it was a complete mess, with old legends coming back, people getting injured and stuff like that, and then people were saying, well, I'm not watching, I'm boycotting it, well, WWE, why are you giving your money to this? And they're involved in a 10-year deal with Saudi Arabia, which means they're going to be producing events, promoting each other, that sort of thing. And there's also talk that uh, Vince McMahon, the own, current owner of he really wants to, perhaps wants to sell it in the next 10 years, because he is getting, getting old now. It was believed that his daughter and son-in-law, who's Triple H, Stephanie Man, would take over. But, yeah, there's a rumour that one of the Saudi princes wants to buy it for $7 billion. Mm. And considering all the, all the, the eyes that have, have pulled over, it's, this, this is actually this event that just happened. There were wrestlers pulling out of it. They thought, oh, well, I'm not going to take the money. It's, it's too much to ruin my reputation if I'm going to Saudi Arabia and promoting this thing. It resulted in them getting, they were getting mocked in a Stephen Colbert as well. Mm. Hasn't, hasn't uh, Hulk Hogan been banned? Yes, he came back for it. He was the host of the event. So when he got a, a burning fire of controversy, just pour oil onto it. See, I do know my WWE. You don't think I do. Yeah, you do. Yeah. It's nice. It's nice to know somebody who uh, knows WWE and will let me just rant at them for years. Yeah. What are you doing in November, Dave? What am I doing in November? Yeah. Obviously, at the end of the show last time, you told everyone what you were doing in October. So now I'm asking what you're doing in November. What was I doing in October? I can't remember what I was doing in October. Well, you're obviously going to Comic-Con. Yeah. And we celebrated Dean's birthday. Who's Dean? He might be listening. Oh, well, yeah, right, Dean. Oh, hello, Dean. Yeah, happy 30th. Okay, then my plans this month, I'm going to... We're talking about wrestling. I'm going to watch wrestling when it comes to Manchester in the second week of November. I've got a, a Japanese convention, which is the start of... Going to be the start of my Japanese adventure, learning and trying to sort out working programmes and holiday stuff over there. Just in time for the Olympics in 2020. Um, you do know if that this, this show goes that long, we're going to have to do cross-international skyping to do this show <laughs> is that a term probably <laughs> how business like of you but the only thing i will say is that if if you call it international skyping international skyping it's isis isn't it uh, 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 uh. Uh. well so i'll tell you you're gonna be locked up and we won't get a december podcast then mm. at least it's in china because china wouldn't even let you do it that's true mm. I should point out some other stories that you didn't get to use this this time. So it went out on Australian Breakfast Show. It was Anne Diamond being called a a fat C word on live television. That was uh, unusual for that time of morning. Google Plus shut down after Google was revealed to have had yet more security leaks. Plus there was a Google uh, walkout happening at the start of November. The PS Classic has been announced, but it's a bit... Uh, 
you know, it's a bit mushy washy. He was never going to please everybody with just 20 games. You can't with a console like that. Mm. Well, I'll tell you what I'm doing this November. Putting your lever. Apart from putting my lever. I am going to be going to to an unofficial Stargate convention in Leicester. Good luck getting lost in any sea, and uh, yeah. you'll need a Stargate to get out of there. Yeah. So you're actually going to pay the 700 quid to get in there, right? No, it's 30 quid. And, yeah, and just to make Dave go, oh, I'm going to be playing Half-Life Episode 3 on November the 21st. You're going to be playing it? Yeah. <laughs> Much like everybody else, I'm going to be playing the game when it gets released on November the 21st. Which means you're going to be playing on a, a cardboard box attached to your lever whilst making alien sounds and getting your housemate to dress up in a blue suit with a briefcase. I'll tell you now, there's going to be an announcement. We don't know what it is. Well, there might be an announcement, but I don't think the game would come out on that day. <laughs> what you should be doing is playing the original Half-Life because it will be the 30th anniversary. 20th. 20th, sorry. I was getting confused with the Mega Drive 30th anniversary. There's a lot of anniversaries this year. <laughs> 25th anniversary, Schindler's List. That probably doesn't mix with all these console things, man. <laughs> One of these things does not go. Mm. Bye-bye, David. Hang on, let me rant. Oh. No, you can actually skip. I forgot what the rant is. Oh. No, it was something about uh, either feminism or something. <laughs> it probably gets in more trouble than we already are. So. Bye-bye, David. Uh, bye bye, Hawkey. Is that the word? Oh, Kevin Bacon's on the TV again. He's playing with these monkeys. Oh, I can't stand Kevin Bacon, especially in the EE yeah, adverts. Can't stand him. Who I can stand is Kevin the Carrot. Save Kevin. Oh, no, we've got to do the um, Christmas ads in January. Oh. In January? Yeah. You're waiting that long <laughs> yeah. to put yourself under torture for two months. Yeah. Because they've already started, but they've already, it's November, they've already started. Bye bye, Dave. Bye bye, the other person. <laughs> Scoop.